Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OpenPay's Q1 FY21 results investor briefing. My name is Jane Lowe, and I'm the managing director of IR department. And it's my pleasure to have supported OpenPay with investor relations through what's been an, another very strong quarter. Thank you um, to all who've made time to join today's call, where we will discuss OpenPay's results for Q1 FY 2021, the quarter ended September 31. Presenting today will be CEO and Managing Director Michael Idle and OpenPay's new CFO, Yusi Nunez. Michael and Yusi will present from the announcement that was lodged with the ASX this morning. The formal presentation will be followed by a Q&A session. If you'd like to ask a question, you can do so at any time by entering your question into the Q&A function below. We will get through as many questions as we can in the time that we have. I'd like now to hand over to you, um, CEO, Michael Idle. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Jane, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for making time to attend today's Q1 FY21 results presentation. I will comment on, on three aspects of the business. First, uh, our business performance along our key metrics. Second, some highlights regarding merchant and, and partner wins, and there have been a number of good wins there. And third, our achievements on our growth investment strategy. So starting with the uh, performance during the September quarter, despite again, a far reaching global economic slowdown due to COVID-19, which has continued in Victoria until now literally and also in the UK, we have still maintained a very strong momentum across all our key operating metrics during the September quarter. We are first of all, very proud to have passed the 1 million mark in active plans and to have achieved a new record growth rate of active customers. So relative to the prior corresponding period, active plans increased by 235% to 1.06 million and active customers increased by 145% to 372,000 relative to P PCP. TTV grew to 68 million for the first quarter up by 95% PCP. Looking a bit more into details in terms of active customers and active plans, increases were again particularly strong in retail and our UK business where we focus, as you know, on retail e-commerce. It's encouraging to see that the percentage of repeat customers continues to increase, finishing the quarter at 78% from 72% in Q4 FY20, which is really a great increase of that important metric. 46% of our customers had concurrent plans with us in Q4. Also, they are very strong positive trend and solidifying the trend that customers are making it routine to use our buy now pay smarter product to manage their cash flow. Looking into the third um, leading indicator, active merchants. Across Australia and the UK, active merchants as at end of Q1 FY21 were 2,279 which is up 35% on PCP, including a number of significant merchant wins, both in Australian and in the UK markets. The quality and size of recent merchant wins together with our strategic partnerships demonstrates our strategy of focusing on larger active merchant acquisitions to efficiently drive growth in active customers and active plans. And that's something, what I think is important to acknowledge we had over the last quarters a, a slight decrease in the number of active merchants. However, an above average growth of active plans and active customers really confirming the strategy of focusing very strongly on enterprise to scale more quickly. And um, this has worked so far really very well across Australia and the UK. Uh, looking at some of the merchant wins in Q1, uh, outstanding examples have been um, in Australia uh, the win of Kogan, including their brands Dick Smith and Matt Blatt, and the Australian business of JD Sports, which we have signed but not launched yet, both highlighting our capability to acquire leading enterprise retailers and with JD Sports even across multiple regions. The strong growth in large active merchant clients has been complemented by significant wins in our verticals, driving a healthy mix of complementary high margin businesses in auto health at home, with the high growth relationships in retail to keep the focus on our market leading gross revenue yield, which is simply revenue divided by TTV, which has been 9.1% in QO and the kind of the continuation of 
having that matrix sitting above um, 9% market leading in buy now, pay later. We are also very pleased to announce our hard launch into the new vertical of memberships. Um, in August, we announced our revenue sharing merchant agreement with sports, leisure, and hospitality software as a service provider, MSL Solutions, which gives us access to their 400 golf clubs and up to 135,000 golfers to spread the payments for golf membership fees over a longer period of time. We have also been able to lately sign a fully integrated partnership with Stack Sports in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. Stack Sports offers services to thousands of sporting clubs across multiple countries who represent major sporting organizations, including the AFL, Football Federation of Australia, NRL, and New Zealand Rugby League. OpenPay will provide the players, members, and parents of sports clubs with the opportunity to pay for their membership and registration fees in plans up to six months and all interest free. The initial agreement with Stack Sports is for three years with us being the exclusive buy now pay later provider for an initial period of 12 months. So we've been really working hard to get this significant um, merchant win in membership um, signed. And um, with that, this is now another key vertical for us um, and further growth to expect it over the upcoming periods. We have also kicked some goals to, to, to keep it in that term in securing partnerships with uh, business platforms to grow our business at scale. Particularly in healthcare, we are very proud of a partnership which went live with leading veterinary practice management software provider EasyVet to provide payment solutions for the growing and lucrative veterinary care market. During the quarter and finally, our innovative B2B solution, Open Pay for Business, was switched on with major Australian retailer Woolworth. Their first business customers are now successfully transacting online with stores to follow. Over the coming month, we have planned for the majority of existing trade accounts to be migrated onto our platform in preparation for Woolworth to sign new business customers. So fantastic to see this now live, and this will also help us to accelerate some of the conversations with other enterprise retailers in Australia and in the UK to understand and adopt this um, highly promising open pay for business for them as well. Some words to the UK. Um, we have experienced uh, our strongest quarter of growth to date with active plans increasing 59% compared to 30 June 2020 to now 297,000, contributing 44% uh, to our total active plans growth. And UK active customers were up 37% to 149,000, again compared to 30 June 2020 contributing 82% of all growth in active customers for, for the quarter. So really, the UK really contributing very nicely uh, from a small basis, but now very strongly to the overall growth, um, aside the very strong growth in Australian retail. Notable merchant wins in the UK were, as reported before, the Hub Group, um, above and beyond um, Watch Nation, Tisuti, Size, and the luxury, luxury brand, The Rug Company. Thanks to our relationship with retail and sports systems, both Fulham Football Club and Wolverhampton Wanderers FC, two English Premier League football clubs, have launched with OpenPay to enable merchandise purchases through their online store as well, which is, which is great and, and works really very promisingly. So to conclude on these leading metrics and, um, and recent merchant partner wins, we have been extremely happy with the company's strong operation performance in Q1 FY21. We have made substantial progress on our goal to create a great business and company. And we have done this in line with our vision to change the way people pay for the better under the core pillars of our growth strategy. We feel particularly encouraged by the excellent growth rates of our leading in indicators in Australia and in the UK, particularly active plans, active customers and, and TTV and the positive ratings and feedback which we continue to get from our customers, merchants and consumers alike. With this, I will now hand over to our CFO, UC, who will discuss our financial position in some more detail. Thank you. Thanks indeed, Michael, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, look, from, from my perspective, you know, what I wanna do today is, is just firstly to 
reflect on some of the portfolio drivers that Michael mentioned earlier, uh, and then translate that into financial outcomes that, you know, what we're seeing uh, and against uh, which we measure ourselves. Um, so firstly, you know, and, and as uh, Michael mentioned earlier, we're, we're very pleased with the, the continued growth in TTV, um, you know, which had a 95% you know, growth rate against prior comparative period. Uh, and in conjunction with our other leading indicators, that really positions us well to continually accelerate our strong performance. Um, and um, in terms of that growth, you know, whilst domestic volume or TTV performance is continuing to trend positively, um, thanks to what Michael, you know, also mentioned earlier towards a, a retail and e-commerce, you know, direction, particularly in Victoria in, in, in the last quarter or so, uh, we're also seeing strong uh, signs of uh, early volume growth uh, in the UK you know, as well. And, you know, the benefits of that in, in addition to top line growth, um, you know, this, this trend has also slightly improved our capital, uh, in, uh, capital efficiency, uh, pardon me, uh, insofar as uh, the group being able to recycle its uh, funding slightly faster or more rapidly, uh, and then uh, creating some uh, funding, uh, funding cost efficiencies as well. So that's on the top line. Um, then if we look at revenue, which, which at 6.2 million for the quarter, uh, represents a gross revenue yield of 9.1%. And you know, it's, it's something that we're very pleased about and, and we pay particular attention to. Uh, look, as, my, as Michael mentioned, it is a market leading rate. And uh, that market leading rate at 9.1% is, is firmly with our, uh, within our expectations uh, and a metric that we consider foundational for profitability once scale is achieved. Um, just a couple of points on, on comparatives. You know, the movement against uh, PCP or prior comparative period is, is, is driven by a slight uh, mix shift you know, in, in, in the volumes, uh, whereas the, the quarter on quarter dynamic is explained by a, by a one-off accounting treatment change that we did and, and communicated in, in, in Q4 last year. So other than that, you know, the, the yield has performed well and, and, you know, we're happy with the stability. Um, look, uh, on the revenue performance as well and, and, and top line, Michael also mentioned that during the quarter we switched, we switched on our first uh, open pay B2B customer, uh, Woolies, uh, Woolworths, which we're now seeing transacting. Whilst this was, uh, this has very positive implications from being able to offer our products to a wider set of customers, uh, it, it, it will also have a very positive yield impact. Um, I, I really see it as a key component over the longer term of maintaining and, and really enhancing our revenue yield uh, or, or contribution margin, if you wish, um, you know, uh, simply from a further diver diversified um, software as a service or SaaS based revenue signature, uh, and a source of very capital efficient returns. And in terms of, you know, uh, touching more on that contribution margin, you know, we can uh, move to the portfolio's credit performance. Um, you know, again, we're very pleased with, you know, steady, uh, steady portfolio uh, profile, uh, which resulted in a net, ba uh, net bad debt ratio of 1.6% of TTV in the quarter, uh, with, you know, arrears in, you know, within accepted parameters as well. And then finally, you know, for, to, to one of the lifebloods of the company, it's, it's uh, lending runway. Um, as at the end of the first quarter, we have uh, a funding uh, funding runway of 16 quarters, uh, which translates into an excess of $140 million in uh, cash at bank and, and uh, undrawn funding facilities that will, you know, support our uh, continued growth. So, Wrapping up, you know, from a financials perspective, you know, I'm very happy with the start of the financial year uh, with all portfolio settings well positioned for continued growth. And um, I'll hand it over to Michael just to mention some uh, closing remarks. Thanks very much, uh, UC. Uh, so as we've heard, the September quarter has delivered very strong results across all dimensions of our business from top to bottom line and provides us with a very healthy a basis for further accelerated growth into this financial year. And the, the key points really strategic partnerships with enterprise retailers, integrations into large business platforms with significant numbers of users accessible, if you like, in one strike, product innovation to engage our customers, B2C and B2B, and our geographic expansion will set us up for the next level of scale and growth over the upcoming periods. 
So a bit more details to further international growth. Um, we are currently undertaking a strategic review of the UK for the launch of um, our specialized verticals, healthcare and automotive, and uh, of further promising markets in the European Union and in other geographies. And um, look at really determining the commercial opportunities and product market fit uh, for our differentiated buy now, pay smarter product and B2B products. So we are very strongly encouraged by the uptake of our product in the UK in retail and the continued success in our home market. This both provides us with the confidence to make our solution available more globally over the next one to two years. And um, obviously coming up with, with news as, as soon as we have landed some of these geographies to announce uh, our launch into. On a more macro level, and I've mentioned this before, the continued significant growth rates of buy now pay later providers of all colors has taught us that this new value proposition of deferred payments will not disappear. To the contrary, it has proven its potential to become the most preferred way people pay at global scale. And we continue to deliver consistently on our, against, on our end against our strategic growth drivers, feeling extremely well positioned with this to take a significant share of the huge opportunity in further markets, adding value to our customers, merchants and consumers and to our shareholders. And this is a very exciting time and uh, there's much more to come and to be achieved. So I keep it with this uh, for the moment. Uh, we look forward to keeping you updated of our progress and thank for your attention and, and your support. And I will now um, hand back to Jane for the Q&A part of this call. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And you see, I'd like to now open up the session to questions. Uh, just a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the Zoom Q&A function via the ribbon on your screen. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes set aside for questions today. If you do have a question that we don't get to field in the time that we have, please feel free to send it through to investors at openpay.com.au after this session. Uh, so we do have quite a number that have come through the chat function already. Thank you, everyone. Um, so start with this first one on revenue yield. So your revenue yield is looking quite strong. How likely is it that you can maintain the same level of yield moving forward? I start with this one. It's a very good question. Um, probably the, the, the main um, driver of this revenue yield is our capability with our differentiated longer term and higher value products to not only get um, fees from our merchant um, as a percentage of transaction uh, value, we also can charge our customers from our three month plans. And I think with this mix of 55% of our fees from, from uh, consumers and, uh, and 45 from merchants, we from the outset have a business model in place which leads to a significantly higher structural um, gross revenue yield uh, with, with our business model. Um, if you take on top the fact that more than 75% of our um, business is uh, originated in the three to four month plans where we have already consumer fees and uh, much less below than 10% in the two month where we only rely on, on merchant fees, we are very, very confident that we see a continued very healthy development of gross revenue margin with this kind of revenue contribution from both sides, the consumer and the merchant. And um, we acknowledge there is a, a significant margin compression on the highly contested two month plan end with all the existing um, players with um, PayPal as an incumbent with their pain for. On the three month plan and longer competition is much less. And um, we see so far a continued strong success for us to kind of keep that margins on the merchants high and continue to also get revenue from the, from the consumer. So. Being north of 9% and, and above is a very healthy uh, place to be. And as you see mentioned, with the operating leverage over time to scale and then reduce all the, the, the costs of doing business uh, relative to strong TTV growth, um, will also lead to a net transaction margin, which is probably higher than the market um, also over time as we scale. So I think a, a great starting base and we continue to keep that high gross revenue yield, which is, which is good and important. Thank you. And, um, and perhaps maybe I just add, you know, a couple of comments there. You know, Michael, uh, absolutely correctly. I mean, you know, the, the the business model is clearly predicated on having that, you know, relatively strong, you know, margin or, or contribution margin to to offset fixed costs, and uh, you know, on top of that as well, you know, we look forward to 
really growing that you know SaaS revenue platform, et cetera, that will contribute to the contribution margin enhancement. Whilst it might not directly be related to a gross revenue margin as opposed to uh, um, as, a, as, a, as a portion of TTV, but certainly um, contributes directly to the to the margin to cover a fixed cost. Okay, terrific. We might now move to one on strategy. So you remove, uh, you mentioned reviewing geog geographic strategies. Where do you think you'll go first after the UK? Look, before we go first after the UK, just to mention there is a lot to win in the UK. Um, as I said before, we have started there for very obvious reasons uh, in, in retail and e-commerce to scale more quickly, what has worked exceptionally well. The strategy very clearly, and we have done this well in Australia, is then to enter the other verticals subsequently and cross-pollinate interesting customer profiles. The older demographics, the more finance savvy and uh, affluent customers who we get now onto our platform with our initial focus on, on, on retail, also on kind of cross-pollinate them into our verticals. So the really next step within the UK is to launch into these other verticals. And we are making good progress. Um, what we what we want there from the outset is, um, is this credit authorization with the FCA to give us more flexibility in longer term higher value plans, but also pricing more flexibly, including consumer fees. So that's an important constituent element of, um, of not only launching into these verticals, but making this a reasonable commercial outcome as we do it here in, in Australia. And then to your point, um, we look now as we speak into the, the product market fit into some of the large uh, European EU markets. Um, there's very promising markets where also culturally people are kind of inclined to um, adopt this type of innovative uh, payment and digital lending product. So, uh, kind of initial feedback of some market screenings has been very, very positive to the type of product which we intend to offer in these markets. And uh, too early to say which will be the first one, but um, there are some large uh, EU markets which we we look into and where we believe we can also deliver um, a sustainable, um, kind of sustainably valuable product into merchants and consumers. Okay, and then a, a related question, I suppose, um, about the current UK business. So has COVID-19 forced any kind of change to your current UK strategy? Not really. Um, we had been from the outset been focusing on, on e-commerce um, in retail. Uh, the plan continues to be to also open up over time as merchants send us the signal, it's now it's now time to do it when kind of we get back to a probably different new normal, but kind of when, when in-store becomes more, a, a sought after a channel for, for retail merchants again, um, which has been kind of slowing a bit over the last period. So we continue to um, intend to launch into in-store. We have the capability uh, in place. So we can do this over the upcoming month, um, listening to our merchants when the right time would be. And then what I said before, launching also into these, um, into these verticals. So no change of strategy and um, on, on, on track to deliver against our, uh, our plans and, and strategy in the UK. Okay, and I, I guess again, probably related to current strategy. So active merchants seems to be growing at a slower rate than your other metrics. Can you comment on why that is? That's right. Um, this is very explicitly and has been a focus now over the last few months to accelerate growth. And um, we have been focusing lately uh, in kind of our merchant acquisition uh, efforts on more the big end of town, which is um, on the one hand side, larger enterprise merchants um, across all the, the, uh, the verticals. Uh, but also kind of technology and platform partnerships like EasyVet and like the, the, the two which I mentioned before, Stack Sports and MSL Solutions in, in memberships. And this gives us, as we have seen in the number, an accelerated growth profile when it comes to active plans and active customers, which ultimately drives TTV and revenue growth. So this has worked really very, very nicely. At the same time, we are also, and I mentioned this in one of the calls before, working towards our automated self-service for smaller merchants, which will not have such an important impact on TTV from the outset, but kind of enriching customers' choice, uh, purchasing with open pay into different um, brands and, and exciting shopping experiences. And um, we will start launching this um, automated onboarding, what we call from contact to contract automatically uh, as a self-service starting in November and probably see from there 
kind of done by technology and increase in, in active merchants as well. Again, not with a significant, significant immediate impact on TTV. So with the focus on enterprise, we had been really focusing on, on increasing active plans, active customers and TTV, which has worked well. And we will continue kind of to work through, through our sales team to focus on, on enterprise and then technology supporting the rest, particularly smaller merchants to come on board more, even more easily. Okay, thank you. Um, question here about Pantana. So has there been any impact on the Pantana agreement through COVID-19? I think really independent on, um, on COVID-19 and lockdown, the plan with Pantana has been now over the recent month since we have announced this partnership to get us into their new era power um, car dealership management software. So they had a change of their technology on their end as well, which they have been completely working through now. And um, the plan is now to um, launch into Pentana supported uh, car dealerships over the upcoming month to be then available at these up to 2,600 car dealerships across the country. And we are very excited after it has now been a while uh, to announce this partnership and, and work with their team in a very kind of succinct way on, on, on the integration to launch now very soon. And we, it will, in order of give us a, a, a nice booster into the continued financial year to accelerate growth there as well. So um, that's coming in very soon. Thank you. We've got a few questions now from Danny Yunus, who um, is, of course, the analyst at Shaw that covers OpenPay. Thank you, Danny. Um, so this is quite a quite a Good one. Um, sounds like the second quarter will be massive, given larger retailer wins from Kogan and JD Sports Australia, wins in the UK, the Woolworth Steel going live now, and upside from Pentana and MSL too. Is this how we should view 2Q with all of that coinciding and timing perfectly with an anticipated strong Christmas trading that it could be a huge in caps quarter for you? It's great to see our analysts to be so excited about the yeah. upcoming growth <laughs> opportunity, and we agree uh, there is a there's a massive opportunity. I think we are now really very nicely lined up across all our verticals and geographies to really capture the the peak season of the year, which is Q2, with uh, with Black Friday now um, coming up uh, next month already, and then leading towards uh, Christmas. Um, it, I think we are in a, in a very good position from today's perspective to see an, an, an accelerated growth profile across our key metrics in Q2. So um, yes, I think we, we can expect um, good, good numbers coming through. Um, you always know when, when the quarter is, is finished what the numbers really have been. But from the outset, we, we believe we are very strongly positioned with recent wins and the continued growth with, with existing ones. Uh, there's many more to, to mention which have been in the mix for a while and still continue to grow very, very strongly uh, across e-commerce and in-store. So I think we are well set up for success and further growth, yeah. Okay, I, I think we've got a couple here from Danny that we've already sort of answered through um, other questions, but I will ask this one because it's an obvious question. So is there a sense of FOMO um, or fear of missing out for those um, unfamiliar with the term in not chasing the US at the moment, like all of your listed peers after pay, zip, sizzle, et cetera. Is your differentiated product ready for the US landscape where the vast majority of, uh, offer exactly uh, exact replicas of short-term after pay type plans? Yeah, for sure. Um, we look into further markets overseas and obviously North America is a massive uh, opportunity for any innovative um payment and digital lending business like, like ours, and even more as we are very differentiated and would not just replicate what others have been demonstrating well over the, the recent periods. Um, I believe from a, um, from a broader platform and product capabilities perspective, I think we are in a, in a very good spot to continue to launch our product into further markets. And we talked about Europe before. Um, we look into further geographies, as I also said in, in the announcement, and um, we, we, nevertheless, we are very kind of um, also they are responsible in our approach and we'll do things when we feel ready and when we have our ducks lined up in, in a row to really then um, being able to service the market with success uh, from the outset. And um, we um, continue to look in, into these further markets and we'll um, 
act as soon as we are ready and would obviously then announce accordingly. Okay, I'm conscious of time. I think we're getting pretty close to time. So we might just take two more questions and then uh, wrap it up. So um, one here, I, I would like to hear more about OpenPay's partnership wins. The market ha really hasn't heard much from OpenPay lately and the share price has plummeted. Um, given the tech fall in September, all other BNPL stocks recovered, whilst OPY continued to go backwards even till this very day. Please, we need to hear more news. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. And um, I got it now a bit more repeatedly from uh, over the last few days from, from different um, stakeholders. And, um, and probably there's a bit of a learning for us to maybe go back to, to the ASX a bit more frequently with some significant wins like Kogan probably could have been a, a great announcement in its own right. Um, nevertheless, uh, I believe we have still seen a strong performance of, of our share price over the, the recent period. And um, we have seen to also uh, to, to the credit of our competitors, some also very compelling news um, from, um, from our, um, yeah, from the other providers of buy now paid and the market. We have seen some, some, ni some nice innovation. So, um, you, in looking back, there has always been a bit, bit of a period where others had more news and then we, we came being back in very strongly. We had a, an outperforming uh, June um, month where our uh, share price probably has, has topped anything what we have seen uh, from, from our um, other competitors. So um, there, will be, there will be more news in the, in the new, new future again, and I'm not worried at all um, about the continued strong uh, positive trend of our share price development. But I take that feedback uh, to come back with, with more news, which we undoubtedly have. I think today's announcement has been rich of them um, to, to go back to the ASX a bit more frequently and, um, and let our excited uh, retail and in-store um, investor base know about the, the great things which we do and continue to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, we might just finish with a product related question. Um, so, and then perhaps hand back to you, Michael, for, for uh, closing comments. So can you explain and describe the way you assist customers with car purchases? What portion of the market do you cover now and what are the future plans? Yeah, car purchases is not what we what we support. We don't uh, provide asset finance with our product. So what we where we really start is um, is car uh, services, car repairs, and accessories, kind of after um, sales market, if you like. So um, the ongoing maintenance of a car's performance and, and safety, in in other words, um, this is a very very important um, business for us already. We have a number of, um, of good conversations in, in that particularly market in, in auto as we speak. And what I mentioned before, seeing Pentana launching with us as a natively integrated opportunity for car dealers to put out our, our plans for, for their customers is an opportunity to really see an accelerated profile of our business in, in auto. Auto is a significant uh, contribution uh, to our business. Um, I don't have the, the very latest number, but somehow contributing around 15 to 20% of our overall TTV origination, and this will only increase. Um, but again, car uh, purchases what we will not support, and it's not planned to do it. But I think there's a massive continued opportunity across markets in, in this um, aftermarket, if you like, services and accessories. Okay. In fact, if you don't mind, we might just add this one last question in because it's come up quite a lot in the Q&A, which is, um, so relates to, I'll read this question out. So Zip has Westpac as a financial institution to back them up. What is the financial institution behind OpenPay in Australia or what plans might you have in that regard? Yeah. Um, there is definitely an opportunity for us to um, work with the larger banks um, over time for different um, aspects, particularly now, growing our book, our receivables book, so significantly over the last period from a funding perspective, we are already in conversation with some of the banks uh, for a debt capital market capability, if you like. So supporting the growth of our book through probably more kind of universally applicable funding lines across geographies and, and currencies. So warehouse financing structures and securitization type of um, funding construct. So uh, this is an, a conversation which, which we have. We are very, very happy with our current specialized debt funding providers, but probably we, we outgrow this over time and will 
then switch into bank provided funding facilities. And obviously, if you look at um, our competitors, there is further partnerships with large banks, also from a distribution network perspective. We have seen lately Westpac with, with Afterpay announcing a partnership on Westpac's banking software as a service to, for, from Afterpay perspective, to enable their customers also to have more money managing products, uh, savings and transactions accounts uh, available. We will see these things um, um, from, from other competitors as buy now, pay later probably innovates now more into adjacent uh, opportunities and demands of consumer customers. And we will over time also contribute to this. But I agree there is going forward ample opportunity to work with banks and we will see um, more coming up over the next periods. Terrific. Thank you. Well, I, I must say we didn't manage to get through all of the questions today. So again, if you had a question that we didn't manage to address, please feel free to email us via investors at openpay.com.au. Um, and with that, I'll pass back to you for closing remarks, Michael. Thanks very much, Jane. And um, ladies and gentlemen, um, to wrap up, thank you very much for joining us on, on today's call. Um, I look forward to updating you, uh, you maybe a bit more frequently even, so uh, on our progress. Uh, and um, as always, as Jane mentioned, more than happy to answer questions which we hadn't been able to answer in this call um, subsequently and looking forward also to getting uh, in conversations again with, with many of you over the upcoming weeks and um, thank you again for your support. Mm -hmm.